You know, if Putin can win over the United States, or if he can get concessions from the United States, that's his big goal, getting a, a slight concession from Germany or Slovakia or you know, any of the uh, of the smaller European states is, you know, is, is fine. Uh, I mean, it's, but it's kind of like gravy for him. The big prize here is to try and get the United States uh, on board. And there's just no sign that, that that's going to happen. There is no convergence. There is no give really on either side. And so we're basically stuck in the same situation where the Russians are in building up their troop presence around the Ukrainian border. Uh, they're starting their military exercises now with Belarus, which of course is right on the Ukrainian border as well. Uh, they're doing naval exercises in the Black Sea, which of course is where the Crimean Peninsula is, which is, you know, what kind of began this whole thing back in uh, 2014 when the Russians uh, annexed it. And, and at the same time, we have NATO and, and Western countries sending more and more weapons in defensive weapons, but lethal military equipment into Ukraine uh, and NATO boosting its troop presence on its eastern flank in, in countries that Russia used to consider to be under its sphere of influence. A lot of people think that Putin wouldn't do anything in terms of an invasion of Ukraine until after the Winter Olympics in China are over, but those end on the 20th. And we also have the end of the Russian military exercises that are uh, now going on in, in Belarus around the 20th. At the same time, we also have a big international uh, security conference coming up, the Munich Security Conference, at which the U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris will, will be attending, and a lot of other Europeans. The Russians are not sending an official delegation to this, but there's kind of a convergence of things in and around the end of next week, which could prove pivotal in whether we see war or peace.